John with Scottsdale Living. This is going to be a killer podcast and really timely, right? So Scottsdale is the home of the single busiest one runway airport in the country. If I got that right, our Scottsdale airport. And we also have a ton of affluent people. So you're going to have this, this situation where there's private jets, there's chartered jet situations, chartered airlines. So today I got Todd Spitzer here from Ion Jet. We're going to talk a little bit about set jet, what happened, and then we're going to kind of talk about what else you can do, what the other options are out there, and just some pretty interesting stuff. So if you were a set jet member or you're kind of interested in how that works or what the options are, this is the podcast you want to watch. So Todd, thanks for being here. Thank you. Thanks what happened, man? What happened? <laughs> well, I mean, well, we first of all, thank you for having me on here. <laughs> totally. And I, you know, we we never worked for Jet Set Jet, but we actually worked w- along with them for sure. many years, helping them uh, provide some lift. And so, what I think is great about the forum today is um, my phone was going off the hook mm-hmm. with regards to the unfortunate uh, closing. Well, they turned the key, right? It was just an open close. There was no delay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it was basically shut down, done, email. Yeah. There was a very nice, thoughtful email out to it, but there was sure. a lot of a lot of chaos and panic this yeah. weekend. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's people that d- d- stranded. Yeah. Yeah. I had I I had easily between myself and the team probably about 100, 150 phone calls. Oh wow. Yeah. And then messages on Instagram, play, sure. uh, you know, uh every you know, uh there was a lot of folks that were just looking for options because they were stuck. You know, what's really interesting is about probably two months ago, there was a post on Scottsdale Living about a guy asking about SetJet because yeah. he was mentioning that, hey, it looks like they've been canceling more flights or they're doing some strange things. So was there a little bit, was, you know, was the writing on the wall or was this kind of like totally unprepared to everybody in the industry? Well, I'm going to answer it two different ways. Sure. Industry-wise and then from the consumer-wise. Mm-hmm. So from the consumer-wise, our side of it, there's been turmoil within the whole aviation industry. Okay. So our side of the industry, and that would be including them, would be what's called Part 135. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's on-demand charter. And then the commercial side is under what's called 121, which is scheduled. Okay. There's been one commonality through everything. Uh, and this would be even the post-COVID era. Mm-hmm. And we kind of talked about it before filming here. Sure. There's been problems with maintenance, mm-hmm. uh, parts, uh, flight crew, uh, actually a shortage. We have a shortage now. Um, and then fuel. Mm-hmm. So how does that affect on the consumer side, right? It's, it, it, you're seeing some of those chaos, that chaos that's happening or anger at airports. You see right. these videos nowadays of everybody angry. They don't realize in the back end, there's so many regulations for sure. safety, for, for, you know, crew training or whatever that you have to get, do. And when you have a system that's not fully running functional and people are depending on their schedules to make things work, it kind of adds one more pinch point to them. So if you have a a business owner or even a family that only has a certain amount of time to hang out with each other and they schedule that and the airlines kind of bump them out five hours or whatever. Yeah, yeah. or you have a private, even on us on the private side, because we still have the same problems with maintenance and everything It's a trickle down. It's a trickle down, right? So it it comes across that the only way I can kind of, even though I own the firm, I'll fly privately once in a while. But if that seat on Southwest Airlines is 35 bucks in the middle seat, I'm still going to take it, right? So, but it's just the same frustration as when you walk up and you see delayed or canceled, right? right? So it just is, it's adding multiple layers of pinch points Mm -hmm. that people get frustrated on. So how did that, when we talk about this situation, right? When you see cancellations, when you see, uh, you know, uh, people having to do different flights, because there was sure. a point in time where there was like Scottsdale to San Diego, but then they right. had to go, you know, one aircraft was down. So then they had to add a flight to Vegas to pick people up and come back or right. whatever. Those are things that were normal. They had to do to try and keep sure going, keep flowing, right? Yeah. Keep flowing. But it's another pinch point. So that's right. where you start to see the the, the Facebook posts or sure. the Instagram posts. Like, is this happening to you? Now, on the industry side, um, we have seen multiple companies in the last, especially in the last 10 to 15 years that have mm-hmm. come out. They've tried to use apps. Like yeah. they had the Uber of jets. They had Black Jet. They had all these other companies that were trying. Who, who was the guy with all the Honda jets? Was that it, it, coming off the top of my head? It's somebody kind of Oh, I knew you were going to ask me. They were out of <laughs> Florida, right? The one yeah. that had the app. 
Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Jet Smarter. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Jet Smarter. And they, they they went out too, right? Well, Jet Smarter was they had some. I, I I don't hold me to, but I think they had some aircraft that they had like a network that they were working mm-hmm. with, and 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 you know, but their app was based off of matchmaking yeah, and, and whatever. Yeah. The the problem that we see with these type of systems is the human element's gone. Sure. The the uh, I'm not going to say the bad word, but the WTF factor yeah, yeah. comes up. Do you right. get what I mean? Sure. Because you have mechanicals, you have weather, you have delays, yeah. everything. So twofold on that. It's a long explanation to answer your question, but we technology does not. It helps in this industry, but yeah. it, but it doesn't take everything away. So we saw a lot of companies fall away from a sole focus on on um, technology, right? Right. This aspect, this has been a, a you know, I th- this has been a a playbook in aviation for about the last fifteen years of this per seat deal, right? Um, multiple companies have tried, so it's a membership failed. based deal. Yeah, right? a lot yeah. of them tried to do it. Well, actually, like like for what we do, we do per aircraft, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, say if you wanted to take again a whole bunch of friends out to Vegas, right? Sure. The only way we could assist you. Uh, is going to our network partners, and so we have you know a network of aircraft that mm-hmm. we utilize, and 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 we help you put together the sure. whole trip, right? Yeah, it but it's the whole trip. So if it's just two of you, or if it's six of you, it's the same sure. cost, right? So the need came through post two thousand eight two thousand nine of wanting to fly privately, have that look and that feel. You know how we have an affluent look out oh, here. Yeah, so totally. this market yeah. was good for it. LA was good for it. Florida sure. was good for it. Um, but there was, the cost factor was too much. Right. So, you know, our threshold for a client is about a million dollars a year minimum in income and about 20 million in assets, right? right. These particular uh, programs, obviously they, you know, they attracted those folks as well, but it lowered the market uh, it, the the market to about two hundred to five hundred thousand sure. base income, and there was a big need for it. Right, and so people were trying to figure it out. There was a ton of smart people that were trying to figure it out. Look at the math, but they just don't work because these aircraft they have fixed costs yeah. to them. Well, I mean, so you got your guy that's driving a two thousand nineteen Malibu doing Uber. Big difference between a guy trying to throw a Learjet up there and do the same kind of thing, right? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you got the cost factors. Just what yeah. it is like if. Uh, that's a perfect example. I don't want to minimize anything that anybody did. No, but, no, yeah. But let's look at let's look at that exact example, sure. right? It, it, Uber's perfect example. Yeah. You're going to buy a car. You got to figure out which one you're going to do, right? You mm-hmm. get an electric vehicle. You don't have to pay gas. This, right, that, right. Whatever it is. There's still a fixed cost of owning that car. Sure. And then you have to gauge whether or not how many passengers I need mm-hmm. to, or how many trips I need to do to make it even, right? And then you want to find that balance where... Your 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 liability is now turning mm-hmm. into an asset, right? Right. We tell people all the time in aviation: if you want to buy an aircraft, it's a liability. Yeah, there's tax benefits. There's things that you could do yeah, with it. Money out of pocket. You though, can, right? but it's it's a liability yeah. because you know you never know what's going to happen, and and you can't forecast everything. Sure. Um, and in the last three years, as we talked earlier, we've had a, a pilot shortage where mm-hmm. now pilots, you know, when there's a shortage, they can yeah, command more. Absolutely. So now salaries are going up. You have supply and demand issues with maintenance. There was a time period up until maybe a year and a half ago, we had to wait for upwards of six months to a year. Um, some of us in the industry had to wait for just tires. Oh, wow. There was aircraft just sitting perfectly fine sure. aircraft that can't fly because the tires right. were bad. Right. So all these factors kind of hit in. Oh, sorry. All these factors kind of hit in. And, but you also have a model though that was, uh, that was flawed. Yeah. It, you know, these aircraft have those fixed costs. And most of these programs like to go off of kind of like the insurance model sure. or, the, or the gym model, like right. we talked about earlier. You want everybody to join. But you it's actually use better it. for yeah. you not to use it. And it's it's counterintuitive, right? Because you would think the more butts in seats, the better they would do. But in reality, like going through COVID, they probably had less people in the seats. So they didn't have the fuel cost. They didn't have the the crew cost. Yeah. But they had the membership money piling up. Then all of a sudden you get out of COVID and everybody wants to go fly somewhere. So they hop on set jet and all of a sudden they got to fly these planes all the time. And that just costs go through the roof. Well, I mean, all of us in the industry, let's, it, let's lump everybody. Sure. I will tell you the first three months of... COVID uh, as the owner and having, you know, 
staff of mine have kids, sure. family, or whatever. I was scared. I, you know, I had to think to myself, how do we, how, how mm-hmm. can we get some good old ingenuity? How yeah, can we do this? Pivot, how can right? we do that? How can we pivot? But in actuality, three months later, it skyrocketed. Sure. I mean, I can tell you as a company, we had roughly about an 800% increase. Wow, that's crazy. And that was because there was the fear. Right. You know, some people flying didn't public. want to, you know, fly in public. But there was also the turmoil in the airlines. And um, the prices actually came down for sure. a while. For a whole year during COVID, there was no FET tax. There's a federal excise tax. They, they oh, stopped so it. they just removed it? They removed yeah. it for a year. So it was, it was going absolutely sure. wonderful. When we came out of it, and I still, there's going to be some people that will probably comment on this and argue with me on it, but there was inflation and there was costs that went up, but there was a lot of greed yeah. as well. Sure. And so, you know, we had to try and figure out how we were going to pivot and adjust it because that was our competitors. That's why these programs that you saw started to become more appealing. Right. Because who wouldn't want to fly on a Challenger aircraft from here to Cabo for, Nine hundred, you know, nine hundred or, or yeah. thirteen hundred bucks per yeah. seat or whatever. And there was many times. There's a a, a great local uh, radio show host here that I was good friends with, that I'm still good friends with. But we talked about it often, and he, he was like, there was one time he posted it even on his Instagram that it was him and his wife only. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's great. Yeah, like considering great uh, for him. Yeah, yeah, on that aircraft, if you were to normally charter it, you're talking in the sixty to seventy grand. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it was appealing. But again, you, you numbers don't lie. So maybe it's a pure coincidence, right? Yeah. But I mean, you get JSX, moves yeah. to Scottsdale Airport. A month later, two weeks later, set jet's done. Anything, any correlation there? Should I go on my conspiracy theories? <laughs> no, I'm just <laughs> um, I actually know JSX pretty well. They were their their original um concept was a company called Jet Suite. Mm-hmm. They they took an aircraft that was the Phenom 100 and right. they were notorious for marketing LA markets, Vegas markets uh for 999 for the whole aircraft each sure. way. Um they did a wonderful job over there of building that up. Um but they they that model started to kind of get flawed again and they pivot and switch to JSX. Mm-hmm. So that's JSX actually stands for Jet Suite X. Yeah. Oh, okay. And so, gotcha. it, it, and, and that's and, a Swift transportation company, isn't it? Um, to be honest with you, they're out. Of, they were out of Swift. I don't think they oh, were with okay. Swift. You no, know, yeah. they they were out. Well, now it's a different FBO name. Yeah. Uh, Jerry got out of that, but it was their product is a little different though, sure. still because it's not like a full private jet, right. and it's a route based product, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's there's I mean, you, the cool aspect about it is you don't have to go through TSA, you don't have to go through. Yeah, you just any, walk on the tarmac you, yeah. right there at Scottsdale. But the experience inside is you know it's a little different. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. It's not the same as being on a full private right. aircraft that yeah. Setjet was doing. My my personal vibe on it is that there was. The, the the model again was starting to show its flaw. Mm-hmm. Um, from what I understand, there was a, a, I read an article that a SPAC they were going through. I, I don't know if you're familiar with the SPAC or mm-hmm. at all, but uh, it's kind of a different form of investing or getting invest, uh, investment investment gotcha. okay. in. Um, it it didn't go through, and and that was what was needed to put the lifeblood into, you know, keeping this going. Sure. And so that was the factor of it. Do I think it's coincidental? I don't know. I mean, JSX is a pretty aggressive company. Yeah. I get it. Um, but I, I kind of think it's a little bit of, you know, I, I predicted with my sales staff that uh, 2023 was going to be an interesting year of where we're going to pivot and switch. Mm-hmm. Believe it or not, our fourth quarter, we bucked the trend. It was great. Oh, fantastic. We thought it Good was going to be, yeah. well, <laughs> now we're in first quarter. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> that Uber is sounding good. No, I'm just yeah. kidding. I'm joking. Um, but... I'm joking, but I think you've got a whole bunch of stuff bleeding into it. Sure. You've got an election year. Mm-hmm. You've got a lot of people that don't know which way things are going. Sure. Um, uncertainty. You know, uncertainty. uncertainty and, yeah. and, and every election year we start to see it. And this one's just an interesting one. Right. You know, um, and, and so there's, you know, you got JP Morgan saying every day we're 85% in a recession or we yeah. don't know which way this is going to go. And so normally everybody just starts to tighten Pucker up a little up. Yeah. So I think, to be honest with you, because I know the people that were over there, I knew them 
I mean, they were even at my birthday party two years ago. Sure. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Very good people. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Very, very, very good people. Um, very, you know, uh, just, I, I believe they tried everything mm -hmm. that they could. But again, if a model is broken, like, and, in, in, you know, I'm not saying this is it, but you know, the definition of insanity. Yeah. Over is doing and over the same and over, thing right? over and over again, yeah. expect a different outcome. So what do you see filling that? Because there's a need, right? Yeah. So is JSX kind of the the filler? I mean, is that where it heads to? Or, well, you know, semi plug from an economy standpoint, right? Like we all know that the spread, but the, the middle class is starting to kind of yeah uh, creep away, right? You're in real estate, so yeah. you probably see it. You sure. see, like you know, there's some families that are just like the home four years ago was 150 thousand, yeah. and now it's two three hundred, right? So you're starting to see that's coming into this market too. Sure. And the way that I can try and correlate it is. Finding that middle ground where you don't have to sit if you don't want to sit on the middle seat of Southwest. Right. Nothing wrong with them, by the way. But if you don't want to sit in the middle of so seat in Southwest, but you can't get to the point of a private aircraft, mm -hmm. I would agree with you. JSX is probably one of those that's probably going to be that good filler. Sure. But they're still going to be subject to the same yeah. issues. Yeah. Crew cost, you know, the maintenance. That's the whole deal. Um, yeah. You know, and... um and so, do I think it's a good vibe for them to go to Scottsdale? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. A killer move. Actually, that was a, that. Like, that's yeah. that. I got to give them as a killer move yeah. for it. Um, was there a lot of people ticked off about it in our industry? Yeah, absolutely. But again, you got to look at it, it's different products, right? Um, you that's know, not your competition. No, it's not. It, yeah. It's really not. I mean, do you know that part? The the folks that flew on either Setjet or JSX. They might have done one charter, two charters a year to kind sure. of like take their friends or family out to like Vegas or, mm -hmm. or up to Telluride or something like that. But, you know, like I said, our clientele are the ones that are flying two, three times a week. Yeah. They're flying yeah. two, three Part times a month. Or whatever, but yeah. Yeah. You know, um, and, and we've, we've even gone down on the government sector a little bit too. And so, you know, it, what I think is most important, and I hope this kind of answers a question a little bit better too, is the options out there are going to start to be, you're going to see that separation. Sure. And, and it's going to be also just accepting some things right now. And, and, uh, <laughs> excuse me. Sorry. <laughs> no, Screwing my phone Here's over me. here. What, Let me shut I, this I, thing I was off. just, I was afraid <laughs> that mine was going to go off actually. Um, but, yeah. uh, that's, that's, that's funny. But, uh, I think there's just going to be, um, the come to realization time period. Sure. Do you know what I'm saying? And, and Scottsdale and, you know, PV markets, uh, built more markets, uh, even Phoenix area, they have a good presence there on the private aviation yeah. side, but everybody knows Scottsdale sure. is the airport to go to. Um, I think it's just going to be a huge year of pivot and switch. Sure. And we're going to have to see where it leads into in 2025. Um, do I see any immediate relief? On yeah. being able to go to Cabo on a private aircraft for thousand to thirteen hundred bucks a seat, I don't probably know. Not probably yeah. not. Um, you know, uh, some of the companies that are doing pretty well uh, in this field are sticking to the Florida, the New York markets, the California markets, where it's it's always been historically sure. strong. Yeah, Scottsdale is great. Like you said earlier, it's one of the busiest airports right. in the United States. But again, it's also what there's a difference between having, you know, 2000 people that are flying once a month yeah. versus having 2000 people in a market flying two times a week. Sure. Do you yeah. get what I mean? Oh, 100%, so where do you yeah. put that money? You right. know what I mean? We're in a big area. We're great. We have some of the most notable people in this area. Right. But that doesn't need a whole bunch of them a whole it. industry to yeah. kind of come into versus New York. So on the flip side, I mean, how much more can Scottsdale Airport take? I mean, it was because when they first yeah. said JSX was going there, kind of went through my head like because I know a little bit about the airport. I mean, it's it's busy, right? I mean, like every seventy two seconds or something, there's a plane taking off. How did they fit that in there? You know, uh, they've done a really good job. I mean, I got to admit, I, about two three years ago, we we you know we kind of moved off off field and we're kind of doing our thing a little mm -hmm. bit. We kind of. Uh, we're kind of a little bit of the quiet company, if sure. you know what I mean. But 
we stay, our, we kept our fingers on the pulse there. And mm-hmm. I think Scottsdale is going to have a good plan yeah. to expand. And they've done a lot of construction oh, around have, there. Yeah. Um, that Thunderbird Road area, that mm-hmm. Redfield area there. Yep. Um, I know that there's huge plans to kind of take some of those buildings that look like from the 70s yeah. and kind of yeah. revamping them up. Um, I think, you know, they're just going to be like any airport, like sure. Orange County, not Orange County, uh, Santa Monica, right? You know, you have a whole bunch of affluent folks sure. that are right by an airport. So you're always going to have that little battle of mm-hmm. how you expand and right. you have a 10,000 square foot house here, but it's on the flight line. Yeah. You yeah. know, so there's always going to be little battles. But the one thing I can tell you about being in Scottsdale is Scottsdale it, as a government has always been pretty good sure. at making sure that they listen to people, figure mm-hmm. it out. But um, it's going to have its breaking point where it can only go so much. Yeah. Totally. Um, could I see it going potentially to a dual runway? I don't, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't, Think yeah, so. they have the space for that. Be tough, right? Nah, I don't know if they'd have to really do some. Yeah, they'd have to really do some changing around for that. Um, but uh, you know, as as Scottsdale continues to grow, I think it's just going to be one of those things that they got to figure it out. Uh, right? You know, figure it out. But it yeah. is a top destination. Yeah. So, yeah, but doubt. that's one thing I will give. I've been to a few different um, airport meetings and such, and and uh, we had a, a, a gentleman that I've known for a while. He was on some of the boards there and he, they're very open and yeah. very, very good at trying to figure out how to make Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Well, tell us a little bit about IonJet. What do you guys do? Well, we are a brokerage firm, so uh-huh. we, um, we don't own any of the aircraft. What, mm-hmm. what I did about 11 years ago, um, was took the, the, um, the relationships that I had from being in the industry for a total mm-hmm. of 20 some years. And finally broke off, went on my own. Sure. And um, big move, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was a big move. Um, I, I'm actually only 25 years old. Yeah. I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. This is just, I, I look 50. No, I'm just kidding. But, um, but no, it was a big move. We took some of the relationships. Um, it, and, and it was just like any other business. The first year was uh, lots of ramen noodles, sure. yeah, lots totally. of things like that. We got it going. But once we got a good uh, foot in the doorway, um, we had some amazing relationships. We have a network now of about 5,000 aircraft worldwide. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, we, and how does that work? Like you tied in with a group that, that other operators or brokerages that, that are on the same network? Yeah, there's, I mean, there's, there's a pool. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But, uh, and also, you know, in this industry, it's just, re- it's relationship based, just yeah. like real estate sites, yeah. right? So like, um, you know, if you pay your bills, mm-hmm. if you keep things safe and legal, and ethical, sure. then you're going to have better relationships than the, mm-hmm. the you know the cheesy brokers that are going to have yeah, their yeah. little mustache, you know, like totally. you, know, you know the villains, right? So we focused purely on the first five years operationally on getting those relationships straight. The thing I'm the most proud of is we're now year six without any turnover wow. on our staff. I mean, there's been a few people that have come in that sure. it just wasn't a good fit, and we made a nice break, but. Um, you know, we focused on culture. Right. We focused on giving back to the community. I mean, I told you where I was at this weekend. Yeah, we yeah, back. I, I try to lead that uh, by example. Um, culture, community, ethics. And then now what's exciting is uh, we're looking at different training programs, mm-hmm. uh, trying to, you know, um, uh, and we're talking to you guys even a little bit about trying sure. to do some education from yeah, a podcast yeah, standpoint. Um, and so... You know, we we focused on that first. I mean, getting flights are easy. Anybody can go online and get a quote and do right. this or that. But we focused on culture, safety, mm-hmm. you know, all those aspects, first of all. And I'm really proud of it. We hit, ele- uh, we hit 11 years this March. That's fantastic. Man. Um, Congratulations. Y- yeah. I'm, 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 we have, uh, and we, you know, when we talked about that inflation, we talked mm-hmm. about the um, the cost going up. Uh, about two years ago, we started a membership that was very low cost to get into. Mm-hmm. But what that did was helped us keep the cost of the flights down sure. by having that kind of that membership funds mm-hmm. to kind of like in those bad months, or yeah, those yeah, slow totally months, you know what I'm saying? Because aviation's through. ebbs and flows. Sure. It's a high ticket item with a very low margin. Right. And so it helped us do that. And so I think we've been ingenuitive. Uh, uh, we've kind of pivot and switched a lot more than I would have. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so the business, right? But yeah. Then I would have liked to, but uh, we have a good solid base. Uh, and then this year we started, um, uh, not this year, I'm sorry, last year. Um, we had a lot of folks that owned aircraft mm-hmm. that were having a little bit of problems with um, trying to figure out how to actually own. Sure. 
watch the profit margins. And um, while legally we can't manage aircraft for profit, Mm -hmm. we can help from a consulting standpoint. So we've helped now. uh, We've, we've, pretty much found almost a total of $30 million of lost revenue wow. from some of these owners and helped switch that now. Sure. And, and so it's a, just a proud moment all the way around. Yeah. You know, fantastic. Yeah. You know, so it's, so been, who's your guy? I mean, who's calling you? Like who's watching this podcast today that would fit for your clientele? Uh, I think anybody is actually. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like, you know, even though I, I'll, I'll put myself on the, on the, on the, on the, sure. on the, the guillotine here for a second. Right. Like, like I'm very happy in my life. Uh-huh. We've done well for ourselves. We're done. Okay. Could I fly privately more often than I, than I would? Yes. But you have to, I think, you know, I've had gentlemen that own two, three small little restaurants, right? right. And they fly privately all the time. And then I've got a gentleman that's worth 900 million and flies yeah. once a year. Yeah. So I think the perfect client is kind of a rough question because it really comes down to where you feel it fits and what you need. Sure. Do you want it for convenience? Do you want it for looks? Do you want it for, um, you know, spending more time with your mm-hmm. family? Um, and, and the biggest determining factor that is the cost. What's the, co- what's the yeah. value of that for you? hundred percent. You yeah. know? So again, just give you one example. If you're a, a, a busy, uh, executive that really only has Friday night to Saturday night to spend with your significant other, then, you know, chartering a small jet to Vegas to go see a search of Soleil show sure. might be invaluable. Cause right. that's the only time you could do something romantic, get out sure. and do something. Or if you get a good, that contract, how much is that contract versus yeah. the aircraft? Right. Uh, I hope that's answering the question, but it's just, it's, it's all over the board. Um, numbers don't really matter because I've literally seen people who make, you know, two, three, four hundred thousand 400,000 mm-hmm. a year, which is a good income. Sure. Nothing wrong with that, but they'll fly as much as they possibly can for that. Totally. For whatever reason fits for them. Yeah, I love it. So tell us how to get a hold of you. Well, you could look at ionjets.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a quick way to go and do it. Um, otherwise, I mean, I, honestly, going into the website is a great way. You mm-hmm. can, you can, uh, uh, you know, uh, you can look up and see how we do things. We have our two memberships there. If people would like to, uh, to help, uh, you know, to kind of see if there's a fit for that. Um, and, you know, um, I'm by no means wanting to capitalize on anybody's bad time in their business or anything like that. But we were going to tell you guys, we, we did want to extend. If people look at our site, mm-hmm. if they wanted to call me personally, which I'm sure we could probably put that yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, somewhere. Yeah, I was going to ask you, like, so the set jet customers out there, they're confused. Can they get, can they just give you a holler and kind yeah. of talk it through? Um, email is just, uh, just, I want people to feel like they could call me personally. Sure. So T Spitzer at ionjets.com is my email address. And uh, I'm sure we could probably put my phone Absolutely. number on something 100%. there for you. Um, and or just the ionjets.com. And um, I don't want anybody in a time period where they might have got financially hit by this to feel sure. like we're capitalizing. So what I wanted to just put out there, too, if they feel it's a fit, mm-hmm. they could come and join us for free. Sure. I well, don't mind that's that. cool. Come on. Right. If they need ideas or where do I go next, we might not be a fit. Right. I want people to feel like they can call and talk to me or talk to one of my staff and we will try and find something sure. that will fit. Um, I just, I hate to see people left in a, no, it's really cool in, a, in a bad spot and we're more than happy to help. Beautiful. Guys, that's, that's Todd Spitzer from Ion Jet here in Scottsdale. You got any questions about what's happened with SetJet or just anything in the, the private jet industry, give him a call, reach out via email, and hopefully we'll have a podcast coming out with Todd soon too to talk about a little behind the scenes and private aviation. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. We've already got, I think, close to 12 people ready to Love come it. on board. Cool. There you go, guys. Have a great day. Appreciate you.